You're watching Meet the Candidates. Mark Lindy uh, here at Brockton Community Access. We are educating the voters for the November 5th City of Brockton election. And I'm here with Interim Mayor Moses Rodriguez, who is running for re-election as a councilor at large. Let's make sure that people know that. Moses, welcome. Thank you, Mark. Um, you've bitten off a lot being mayor. You councilor at large, former president of the Cape Verde Association, executive director, community activist, as long as I've known you. Um, are, are, are you looking forward to the election on Tuesday so you can go back to where you are? Well, I'm looking forward to elections on Tuesday, but remember, I don't go back to where I was until January 6th. Correct. So as it stands today, I think I have about 66 days plus 10 hours left. You're not counting, right? Oh, no, I'm not counting. But that's how much uh, time I have in the, uh, in the mayor's office. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong. It's been a, a great honor to serve the city as its mayor for the last uh, three months or so. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been difficult. It's been difficult uh, because, as I said from day one, it wasn't my administration. It was an administration that I came in and found uh, rolling, uh, in some ways rolling well, in some other ways not rolling so well. And it's been uh, trying to put uh, your own touch on, uh, on, on the city government side of things. Uh, but I will look forward to uh, going back to the city council if I'm so lucky to get voted back in on Tuesday. So are the issues different this time <clears throat> running for re-election? Has the city changed? What are you hearing? I'm sure you don't have a lot of time at this point to campaign while you're the mayor, and I don't know how people juggle that fast, but... Well, it's kind of it's kind of complicated in the sense because if I was the mayor and I was running for re-election as the mayor, everywhere I went, I could say, vote, uh, don't forget to vote for me because I'm running for re-election as mayor. But in my case, it's been somewhat difficult because it's to say to people, don't forget to vote for me, but vote for me as the city councilor at large. So it kind of creates a, a bit of a confusion with a lot of people in terms of knowing where you land or you don't land. Uh, but at the same time, I made my intentions very clear from day one that I wasn't going to be a candidate for mayor, uh, that my intention was to ask for uh, a fourth term as a council at large here in this city. You've seen both sides now. The, and, and I shouldn't say sides because if you think about it, probably the most important job for um, councilors, mayors, everybody working together for the good of the city. What issues need to be addressed going forward over the next mayoral administration and the next city council administration? Well, as always, I think um, the issue of public safety will continue to be paramount in the city. Um, we have uh, a great group of police officers in the city uh, who do uh, a, a wonderful work uh, with what they have. Uh, but the resources that they have uh, are not resources that a department should have. Uh, you look at, we're in the process of buying some new cruisers. Uh, we've got a couple uh, truck units that, um, that has been used in the city for quite some time that, uh, according to one of the police officers, wouldn't even be able to pass inspection. So here's a truck that basically pulls over is a car that basically pulls over trucks and inspect cars and trucks, but yet it itself would not be able to pass inspection. So it's been uh, those things are around uh, 12, 13 years old. Uh, they've been around a while and they need to be replaced. Uh, but it does cost money to replace all these things. You know, we've got fire engines that are on their last legs that need to be replaced. Uh, and we also have uh, a severe lack of uh, a shortage of manpower. Uh, we don't have enough uh, police officers uh, to serve a city of this size. Uh, and our guys are being taxed to the, grin, uh, to the brim, basically, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, put, you, know, putting out, you know, putting out there a lot more than what they should be putting out in terms of uh, time and effort. So that, to me, would be a main concern in terms of uh, us moving forward as a city. Uh, the development in the city continues to be an issue. Uh, you look at, uh, there's a lot of companies that want to move into our community, but a lot of times they come in looking for uh, handouts that sometimes make it very difficult to, um, 
to comply because if the idea is to bring business in, into a community, is to bring revenue into a community, not necessarily to take revenue out of a community. And that being said, uh, we need to attract the right types of businesses into our community and not just attract businesses for the sake of attracting business. I know you guys have talked about at the city council <coughs> level the tax increment financing and maybe how long it should be for. Is that what you're referring to? That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, we don't, we don't do the same thing to our residents. Uh, I mean, I use the analogy that I build a home on Summer Street and that the house is probably worth three to four, maybe $400,000 or so. Uh, we've got businesses coming in, purchasing properties for less than $200,000, maybe investing a few bucks here and there, and yet asking us for a tie or a tiff uh, where the residents aren't getting any of that stuff. Um, and people need to understand that uh, if we're not providing some services to our residents, uh, a lot of times we got to look at it and say, what exactly is in, the, in that business for the residents? Because you're asking, they're asking us to give them a break, but yet we got to look around and say, what's in it for us? And a lot of times there isn't much for us because if you're not paying taxes, there's not much coming back into, into the community. Uh, so that's what I'm saying as far as attracting the right types of businesses. We can't just uh, go out there and, and tell people that you know we're in dire needs of, uh, of development just for the sake of development, but it's, it's got to be the right development, something that brings in jobs into our community, something that brings uh, some serious, um, uh, uh, something that's pleasing to the eye in terms of a building that's being built in the community that actually beautifies the, uh, the community itself, but it can't just be bringing in businesses because we're desperate, we're going to bring in whoever we can, regardless whether or not we're getting anything in return. Um, we're going to talk education in a minute, but let's oh, talk education. downtown. Let's talk downtown. Um, I covered an event that you were at that uh, the soup man turned over the keys to the portable showers because he comes and helps homeless people in Brockton. Right. Downtown Brockton's been re booming with redevelopment, but we still have an issue downtown with Father Bill's Mainspring. Mm -hmm. It's been proposed. Everyone wants to move it someplace. Right. <clears throat> CSX, I've heard. The south side of Brockton, where the Kmart's going out, who right. knows? And nobody wants it in their backyard. What do we need to do with that? You, I, 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 you were heartfelt that day when you were talking to the soup man about helping people. He did it out of his love for his son that had passed away. You go by here every day. You, you do a show here. You look outside the building. Um, there was an older lady sitting on my back fire escape in the back of, of this building. I didn't want to tell her to move along or anything right. like that because it broke my heart. I found something that I was bringing home for dinner and I handed it to her. But what do we do? What do we do to, um, because the problem with homelessness in Brockton, we're not talking Brockton people. We're talking people that come from every place outside of Brockton. Well, Mark, it's interesting that uh uh, a lot of times we tend to forget that we're humans, we're human beings. Um, and we forget that most of us are probably three, four paychecks away from being homeless ourselves. Um, no one, at least from the people that I've spoken to or have dealt with, uh, wanted to become homeless. There was issues, either there's some drugs, some uh, other substances that they're in, uh, some facts, facts that they can't afford the home that they were living in. Uh, but I often said, have said that the issue of homeless, homelessness in Brockton is not a Brockton issue, but it's a Brockton problem. It's not an issue that's at Brockton and Brockton only because, as you said, uh, we're getting people from all over the communities. I've met, uh, I remember one Sunday afternoon I drove up here and, I, and stopped and talked to about 20 people. Not a single one of them were from Brockton. They were from a as far away as Duxbury, uh, Kingston, places that you'd never think of in terms of having a homeless population, uh, some well-to-do communities. But the problem is that, uh, as you said, nobody wants uh, the shelter in their, in their backyard. I'm glad we have a shelter in Brockton because uh, often in the last few weeks when we have been talking about this issue, you have people saying, well, Maybe we should cut down on services in the city. Maybe we should move uh, the DTA office. Maybe we should move uh, Social Security and some of these other services that we have in this community. I don't want those services moved because I have, my mother is 79 years old. Uh, she's on Social Security. 
uh, she might need uh, an office here and there for services. Uh, I've got a ton of relatives who are uh, users of services, social services in this community. We're lucky enough to have three medical facilities, two hospitals and a health, care, and a, a health center in this community because we also have 100,000 plus people that roams the, the streets of this city calling Brockton home. I want to make sure they have hospitals to go to, a health center to go to. So it's kind of dumb even to suggest that we should move away the services because the homeless people would move away, which to me it's almost like why would I want to poke my eyeballs out just to, to satisfy somebody else? I want the services in Brockton. But the issue is uh, one of the things that we try to do in the office, which is uh, we put together um, uh, a, like a, what, what we call the stakeholders on, on uh, homelessness issues in the community where we invited people to come together and discuss the issue frankly. We also have taken a little further than that by meeting with the town managers of the towns that, are, uh, that surround Brockton mm -hmm. and talk to these individuals and say, listen, some of these folks are your folks. We've got statistics that says where their previous address was, which is not Brockton. What can we do together as a community to resolve this issue as, from a regional standpoint? I don't think that's been done before. No, but we did it. Mm -hmm. We did it. We brought them all in, and we've gotten some, off, some, some positive results out of it. You've got um, Stoughton who said, hey, listen, uh, the, uh, it seems from what you're saying that the issue is the lack of day programming because the shelter, the, the problem is that they'll go into the shelter, and at 7 o'clock in the morning, they get kicked out of the shelter. So now they're walking the streets from 7 until it's time to go back into the shelter. So you see uh, sometimes we don't have a large number of homelessness uh, folks in this, uh, homeless folks in this community. It's often that you're seeing the same people rotating around. And if you see one homeless and the next time he swings around with a different color jacket or whatever, you're thinking it might be someone else. But it's not like we're dealing with three, four, or 500 people. You know, we're probably looking at less than 200 folks, you know. So if all the communities that we have in the surrounding areas pool in with the city and come up with a, perhaps a day program in Stoughton, another day program in Easton, which they actually have said that they're willing to help us with that. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps the Whitmans and the uh, Abingtons and the, and the Bridgewaters will come up with something like that. And that issue could actually be resolved easily. But in the meantime, uh, one of the things that we were able to do, we've got a, a pastor uh, at the church at 65 West Elm Street, who, who already has a day program out of his place. And he came up with the idea of saying, listen, I've got a place large enough to house perhaps 100 people, but I don't have resources. I don't have human resources to help me run this program. How about if we coordinate with some other people who are willing to volunteer in helping us out? And we've gotten a couple pastors together. We're going to get some volunteers together, and we're going to turn that, his program into a more robust Day, day program to perhaps get the people off the streets because you cannot go to somebody and says get off the sidewalk if they don't have a place to go. I mean, you, this is what we lose our humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just kick people around like they're use, you know, use pieces of furniture or whatever because you got to treat them with dignity and respect because they're American citizens. You know, they're down on their luck in the sense, but they're still American citizens. They must be treated with dignity and respect. So by moving those uh, individuals into those day programs, perhaps we can, we can cut down on the number of people that you see walking the streets because now they have a place to go, a place to hang out where you might be able to put some services in, uh, some housing services, some uh, employment services, and perhaps get these individuals more uh, involved and, and employed and, and off the streets. Let's talk education. <clears throat> you graduated Brockton High School. A long time ago. A long time ago, you and I, similar years. <clears throat> Your kids, Brockton Public Schools. Yes. Um, I'm sure being mayor and now chairman of the school committee, because that goes with the job, you've seen a lot with education. Okay, it's a, it's a hot topic, it's a big issue. Uh, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Do we have enough resources? Do you think we're ever gonna get the resources we need from the state? to take care of what our needs are for being a poorer community. And uh, it, the revolution started here with Webby Dukakis with the original lawsuit over education reform, but it hasn't been touched since 1993. Yeah. Well, the, re the revolution will continue because, uh, as you may recall, uh, I was part of the council that actually put money into the budget to sue the state 
over the lack of funding that they're providing to our community. And the latest discussions that I've had with both the folks in the school system, the lawyers who are representing the city, is that we're not taking our foot off the gas. We're going to go forward with this stuff. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to charge into court, but we wanted to make sure that they know that the soldiers are manning the front lines and ready to go if the results that comes out of the, uh, these new appropriations that they're talking about are not sufficient enough to support our school system, we're going to go forward with this thing. Uh, I think they need to know that because what, had has, what has happened in the past is every time, every time we threaten to do something in terms of legal action against the state, they'll throw a bone here, a bone there to us, and we kind of fall back in comfort. Oh, we got a couple million dollars. We got a million dollar here, a million dollar there. It will suffice us for an extra, you know, an, extra, uh, an extra six months or so, and we'll forget about it, and then we'll back in exactly where we started before. So the idea this time around is that we're not going to do that. We're going to stay alert. We're going to stay on point. We're going to stay ready. And if those appropriations don't come down through the Chapter 70 reallocations that have been talked about, we're going to go forward with this thing. And that's what I intend to do as long as I can, both as mayor for the next couple months and as member of the city council, is to make sure that we move forward with that particular thing. Listen, we have the fourth largest community in Massachusetts. I'm a believer that we do. We have the fourth largest school system. If we have the fourth largest school system, chances are we're the fourth largest community. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't done a very good job in the census uh, in counting our people because some people are petrified of us becoming a large city, but open your eyes. We are a large city. You know, if we have the fourth largest school system. Don't we get a lot more money if we're actually counting? You and I were involved the last census count. Yeah. I think you were working for Mayor Harrington mm -hmm. at the time. And then the administration changed. Right. So I wanted to sue this, uh, the census. Boston yeah. did that. Boston sued the Census Bureau, and they gained 60,000 people. Imagine if we had done that and gained 6%, I mean 10% of what they got, well, we would have been over 100,000. You and I know that we're over 100,000. We are. This 94,000 number that's existed <laughs> is there's no way, there's no how. how. Listen, I know I don't have an MIT uh, degree. I didn't do well in Harvard, but I have a, a UMass uh, degree or even a, a Brockton High uh, diploma. I can add pretty well. If you look at Lowell, Massachusetts, Lowell is in the books for 108,000 people with 15,000 plus kids in their public school system. Right. How can Brockton, at almost 18,000 kids in, their, in its system, be at 94,000 people? How does that work? If they're at 108 with 15, we, with it, almost 18, should we not be at 110, 120? You know? And that's, I'm just saying, logically, shouldn't we not be up there? So how are we at 94? I can tell you why we're 94. We're 94 because we undercounted this city like you didn't believe. If you have an apartment with two bedrooms and you have 10 people living in it, people just put down four, five, six people. The other four was left on the side. Count the satellite dishes on the side of the house. That's one way to do it. You know? But do you think it's because of the political climate in, in D.C. trickling down? here where, you know, the ordinance that went before the council that you and Councilor Duran and Court sponsored, mm -hmm. that might hurt in the long run for people being counted, okay? I'm not saying the ordinance, I'm talking about people are actually afraid to, to, to stand up. Do you think that has divided the city? Do you think people have gone into their own little silos here? I know you talk, from the day I met you, You've talked about one Brockton and everybody peacefully coexisting in Brockton. If you think about the city, it's, a, it's been a city of immigrants all the way back to day one. You know, one thing I've done um, uh, quite a few times, you should go and see, you know, I, I invite people to visit our kindergarten classes. Go down to the kindergarten classes and see white boys black boys, brown boys, whatever boys, girls, whatever, the way they interact with each other. That's how it should be. And if those kids are interacting with each other at that level without regards to skin tone, color, and language or whatever, why are we doing that as adults? Uh, it saddens me that, you know, to be honest with you, and I tell everybody this, I was the author of that ordinance. 
I was the author of that ordinance. And frankly, it was an ordinance that was copied from ordinances in Boston, in, Spring, in Springfield, in Worcester, in Somerville, in Lawrence, Lowell, uh, Cambridge, even Newton, Mass. Newton passed a similar ordinance by 19 to 0 vote. All their counselors voted for it. All the, their mayor supported it, their police chief, their fire chief. And how affected by immigration is Newton? The point is, when you've got people making assertions that, oh, it violates federal laws, well, Boston just violated it by passing it. Worcester, Springfield, every city, every major city in Massachusetts has some sort of an ordinance in their books to protect those that feel unprotected. I understand that we're special in Brockton. We don't want to violate the federal laws. We don't want to violate anything. But it's funny how we didn't have a problem with violating federal laws in passing marijuana laws, which is illegal in this country. We didn't have a problem voting for marijuana. But yet, we had a problem voting for an ordinance that every other city in Massachusetts ha does have in place but we weren't concerned about that. So it's not about violating federal laws, because if it was about violating federal laws, we wouldn't have voted for marijuana. And the same administration that was in place at the time that was so anti this ordinance was actually the same administration that was beating the crap out of the council for not moving fast enough to violate the federal laws with passing marijuana. So I look at it and say, can we, can we say hypocrisy? It's okay to violate when it's marijuana, but it's, okay, it's not okay when it's, when it's to violate to protect brown people. So let's be realistic. That's exactly what it was. And it saddens me because again, all these other communities, I, I mean, I hear that, well, it was kind of a sanctuary city law. Well, if Boston has it, what's, what's sanctuary about Boston? What's sanctuary about Somerville, or Lawrence, Lowell, Springfield? What, what, are the, what are the residents in Newton getting that Brocktonians aren't getting? That's the only one that's not a gateway city, right? I'm just saying, but what are right. they getting that's so special that we're not getting? So my point is that, listen, it's perfectly fine for people to say, I'm against this because I don't want this law. But don't come back with, well, it violates federal law, and we don't want to violate federal laws. It takes resources away from the police when Immigration laws are civil laws. That's why they've got their own court system set up and their own police force, with, which is ICE, set up. You cannot arrest somebody who's illegally in this country and take them to the district court. It has to go to their own court system because being in America is not a crime. Even though you might be here beyond your stay, it's not a crime. It's not a crime. That's why you can't lock people up in a district court and charge them with a the crime. All you can do is bring them to their system, which is the immigration system, and ask them to leave, you know? But I also don't want us to sit here and think that by not passing these kinds of laws, we're actually helping people because we're not. What happens a lot of times, you've got somebody committing a crime and getting deported out of this country without serving time for a crime that they committed. If, if somebody violates my family's civil rights, rights in this country, I want them to pay the price for that violation here. I don't want them to get picked up by ICE and get deported as a free get out of jail, you know, jail as a get out of jail free card. And this is sometimes what the mentality does here in terms of saying, well, if ICE can come in and kind of swoop these people out and get them out of the country, whoopee for them. But guess what? There's no justice for us. So people that sometimes claim that they're for justice, for law enforcement, that ordinance was all about providing resources to the police so we can do our job a little bit better and make sure we are prosecuting every single person that's committing a crime in our community. And that did not happen. And shame on us for not doing it. Shame on us for not doing it. Shame on us for confusing the issue. Shame on the, on the administration to make it into a sanctuary like, oh my God, let's stay away from this because this is gonna turn Brockton into the sanctuary city that all these other cities already are. Brockton's always been a welcoming city. At least that's why I 
chose to live here and bring my yeah, kids and up that, here. And that, issue, everybody that issue is done and over with. It's time to move on. But I'm just, I wanted to get that off my chest because uh, it aggravated the, the daylight side of me. As someone who served this country in its military, uh, as an immigrant, I came to this country as a teenager and I signed up to serve in the United States Navy, not getting a dime or anything from the Navy or from the government. I did it because of my love for this country and my uh, uh, willingness to to die for it if needed be. So when I hear people questioning my patriotism, you know, that I want to turn this whole thing into, uh, you know, one of the South American countries or whatever, it bothers me a little bit because people have not walked my shoes. And, when, and, when, and since they have not walked my shoes, they shouldn't question my patriotism. Well said. Um, I think we got about five minutes. Okay. I want to make sure that you, um, I, I'm, I'm getting cues from the, the headset right over there. Yeah. I don't know if it's five or ten. You can tell. Three. Three. Okay. So you take two of them and tell people, talk directly to the voters, why they should reelect you as city councilor at large. Well, um, one of the things that I, um, I've always said, and I'm glad uh, Fowell actually says that a lot of times, is that we wanted an honest and transparent government. Uh, I came into this government... Uh, again, not because my father was this or my mother was this or my uncle was this. I came in with no attachment at all to this city government. I came in to prove myself to the voters in this community, and I think I've done that. I've come in, questioned when questions needed to be asked. Uh, I've come in and provided some solutions when solutions needed to be had. Uh, I've been willing to step up. I was able to, uh, I was able to step up and step in uh, when we lost our mayor uh, to run the city. And it shows you that I'm willing to do what I can to help Brockton become a better city. Um, we have a lot of candidates who are out there promising the world. I mean, we were jo joking about, about it a few minutes ago in terms of all these great things that these candidates are, are proposing to do, when in reality, our job as city councilors is solely to represent the interests of the voters in this community. We don't, we don't create programs, we don't build things, we don't run roads, we don't, we don't hire police, we don't fire police. Our job is to basically be the voice of the people that actually voted for us to be there. And when the administration comes in and proposes what, uh, uh, things to do in this community, it's up to us to ask the right questions, push when we need to push, work with the administration when we, when we should work with the administration, but at the same time re represent uh, what is in the best interest of the people. And that's what I intend to do for the next two years if I am so lucky enough to have the, uh, the voters in the city vote for me on Tuesday. And if they choose to go in a different direction, I understand that as well. You know, it's uh, you know, no hard feelings. It would, it, it would make sense to put me back in there, but if they choose not to, that's okay too. But I want, to, I want to make sure that everybody gets out and vote. Uh, vote your conscience. Vote. Don't be fooled by all the noise on the outside. Don't be fooled by all the, uh, all the rumors that you hear out there. Vote your conscience. You know more than anyone else who has done what and where in this city and who's able to do what and where in this city. So if I'm fortunate enough to go back, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the vote. If not, that's the way life goes. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule now. And the most important thing is, and thank you for your service to all of the veterans who served our country who fought for the right for you to vote. Make sure you go out and vote. Make sure Brockton is the true city of champions. Let's blow the numbers off the roof. Go out there on Tuesday and uh, make us proud. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on election night.